Hey everyone, welcome back to part three of working through the Talisman machine here on Hack Smarter. This is a medium rated machine, but I'll be honest with you, I find it a little more difficult to be the upper edge of medium or even hard level, at least when it comes to initial access, unless you have a lot of experience with databases and SQL and doing all of that fun stuff, which I do not. Now, in the previous video, we ended the video by getting full file read, and we were able to successfully read Etsy password. Well, I began making this third video and I can no longer read Etsy password with the same exact command that I ran. So I wanna give a huge shout out to zero X Bob, if I remember, which remind me in the comments if I forget to do this on the standalone video, but I will drop a link to his walkthrough in the description. He does an incredible job with walkthroughs, but when I looked at his walkthrough, he had a slightly different syntax and a much easier syntax. So he ended up doing this right here, this execute immediate, and then reading each one of the lines in order to read Etsy password. And I was able to do that this time in order to read Etsy password. My previous command didn't work, but now we can read Etsy password. And what stands out to me, knowing that our focus is to get some type of RCE or a more stable shell on the machine, is I wanna see which users have a login shell. Also, you may notice chat as people are chatting, it's gonna pop up on the screen. I make these while I live stream because I think education should be as accessible and as affordable for as many people as possible. And I live stream all the time. So if you never join me for a live stream, you make sure you subscribe and hit the little bell notification on YouTube and you'll be notified the next time I am live. Anyways, when we look at our output, and I think I actually have this in my notes from the first time we read Etsy password, these two users stand out to me. We can tell that they have a login because we have home Oracle and home superset and bin bash. I don't know if there's any other ones that have an actual SSH login, but we have to kind of connect the pieces. Remember when we began enumerating the machine and we saw that SSH was running, the first thing we checked is whether or not password auth was enabled and password authentication is enabled and SSH is enabled. I'm thinking a few things. One, I wonder if we can read or write to one of these people's like SSH folder. Maybe we can steal their private key. Maybe we can input our public key into their authorized key folder and then SSH in. I don't know for sure, but that's gonna be what I'm gonna try to do. So I guess the first thing is we wanna see, hey, can we list out files in either one of these users' home folders? We can try the home Oracle user first and I believe the way that we could do that, and I'm gonna have to experiment a little bit, but if we look at our previous command, we first pass it like our directory that we wanna read and then the directory Etsy or the file. And I don't know if we have to create a replace directory dir Etsy as Etsy. So if I do something like create a replace directory dir root as, Okay, I'm just experimenting with something. I don't know if this will actually work, but if I wanna read something like Etsy hosts instead, will this command work? I just wanna make sure I'm understanding the output. And okay, we can see it right here at the bottom. I am able to read Etsy hosts. So then if I do something like home Oracle SSH like that, and then do something like ID RSA like that, can I read a private key? Oh, and it actually did work. I was totally not expecting that to work. Let me grab that and add it to our notes. And I'm gonna do an H1 and we will say compromising, if I could learn how to type, compromising the Oracle, geez, I cannot type, the Oracle user. And we will add that. Have to. Oh, what up, Xerox Bob? Good to have you in chat. All right, compromising the Oracle user. Let me go ahead and copy this, paste it in, and we were able to read the Oracle user's private key. So I'm just going to add that to my notes as well. And it looks like the formatting's fine too. So we don't have to fix any of the formatting, but let's copy all of this. Control C, paste it in. And now, can we actually get a stable shell finally in the third part of the video? Let's find out. I'm gonna do nano uh, ID RSA. I'm gonna paste it in. 
I'm going to change the mode to 600 so that it has the proper permissions to use the key. And now we'll try to SSH as Oracle at talisman.hacksmarter and dash I to specify the ID RSA key. So if you're new to like SSH syntax, I'll explain it a little bit. First, we SSH and then we specify this is the user we want to SSH as, and we just compromise the private key for the Oracle user. And then we want to specify the machine. So talisman.hsm is our target server, but then we want it to use the private key that we found, which the dash I flag does. So we'll hit enter on our keyboard and we have successfully logged in. I'm just going to copy, we'll copy all of this showing our syntax and we have compromised the Oracle user. I'd assume at this point in time, we are able to get the user flag. Let's find out, and there it is right there. So I'm gonna cat user.text, and I'll just give you that as a freebie. Hopefully, you don't just follow my video and steal the flags, you're only cheating yourself. I don't do any silly leagues like other platforms, so really, the purpose of Hack Smarter is for your own learning. But let me go ahead and grab the flag, and at least get credit for it. So that is a user flag. I'm gonna hit submit and successful. Now we need to begin hunting for the root flag. So I'm gonna do an H1 and I'll just call this like post exploitation from the Oracle user. And I'm looking over at my recording time. We're doing good on time. Awesome. Let's begin with a little bit of Linux privilege escalation. What machine go? Don't we need an extra new line at the end of ID RSA? You do not, at least I didn't. I don't think you should either. Started using Notion, glad you enjoy Notion. All right, so a few things I like to do. Number one, I like to see what groups is my user in, and I can already see that we are in a bunch of groups that we may be able to abuse. So this is of course a database group a backup database. I don't actually know what permissions this gives me in Linux. I'd have to Google it, but let's go ahead and add this to our notes just in our post exploitation as we begin information gathering to see what we have access to. We can also check our pseudo privileges and this seems to be likely the thing that we can exploit. Let me drop that in my notes as well and I'll explain what I just did. One of the best things you can do when you're doing a CTF or even a real world engagement on a Linux machine, after you compromise a user, if you can run anything as sudo, there's a very good chance you can abuse that privilege. So running something as sudo means that we can run it as the root user. I'm getting another phone call guys, but this one looks like spam. So we're going to ignore it. Anyways, running it as sudo means that we can run it as the root user. And it says we don't need our password, but as sudo, we can run this, which I don't even know what this is. Let's find out if I cat it, can I read it? And I get permission denied. So I can't actually read the file. What happens if I run it? Okay. It says check that for the output of root script. That's the only information it gives me. So I'm going to grab that and add it to our notes. Pseudo permissions and we'll paste that in. Now, like, I don't even know though, if we can read this, I have a feeling it's gonna be restricted, but really what I wanna know is like how, yeah, how, what is this root.sh? What does it actually do? And we could do a little bit of research because it's DB home X E, and we could maybe read about it a little bit. So let's go ahead and do that together. We can close out Gemini, and I'm just gonna type that root.sh. Is there anything online that will explain to me what this is? I don't like the AI overview, but. I'm just gonna dig into a few of these. Otherwise I can look at the AI overview. All right, when installing the database and start prompting to run root.sh script, that created three files. I left the value. When multiple products, I don't know if that's going to be helpful to me. Login is root or super user. Okay, change directory where Oracle server files are installed. Run the following command, the output for the root SH script. Okay, what does this script actually do? Can I just inject into it like... No, <laughs> that doesn't work. <laughs> 
check blah, blah blah for the output of the root script oracle the timestamp and file name and the file name looks like now it is now because when we run it it's saving the output to that i just don't know what i don't know what the script is actually doing but clearly that's going to be our way forward i'd assume since we can run it as root but let's let's continue to enumerate a little bit and see what else is on this machine we have another user called superset we can't access superset. We can lsla in the file root, and we can go to something like opt and see if there's anything in the opt directory. And that's where we have all the Oracle stuff. I don't know if I can read any of this. Can I go to admin? I don't know if there's anything helpful here. I don't think there is. All right, well, let's, let's read a little bit more about this root file. We'll see how helpful the AI overview is. So this refers to root.sh. We got that, which must be run by the root user after the main installation is complete. The script performs post installation tasks like copying files, setting file permissions, creating symbolic links. Can I do a dash H for it? I guess that's the other question. Is there a help menu built into the binary? Let me just go back to it and do a dash H. No, there is not. Okay, it does not give me any anything helpful there. Navigate to the Oracle home directory, run the script, follow the prompts that appear on the screen. You may be asked to confirm overwriting existing files, log out when the script finishes. It out, oh, what am I missing in chat? It worked, it outputs who am I? I don't think so. What about an option like dash H? Okay, so you guys, we're all thinking the same thing. I'm glad we're on the same wavelength. You know, I just want to know like what this actually does. And maybe if I just copy this in a Google, can I see what the actual file is? I want to know what, what the actual content of it is. We'll do privesk. I don't think this is something on GTFO bins. There are no known inherent unpatched privilege escalation vulnerabilities. Yeah, but if we can run it as sudo, there is going to be a way for us to um, abuse it. I'm just not sure what it is. See if there's anything. I, I doubt there's going to be anything in our excellent at our installation guide. But I will just say, guys, for those of you who are new to the world of ethical hacking. This is what a lot of it is. It's trying to like read through documentation, knowing that, hey, this thing seems off. There might be a way of exploiting it, but we don't know what that way is. And that's what I am attempting to do now. So let me think. When we run it, it is copying files, like copying directories and setting permissions, apparently. We cannot read the log file that it creates. And we cannot... No, let's, okay, I have an idea now that I'm thinking of it. Let's, do we have write permissions anywhere else? So we know that it's executing a .sh script. We can't read the .sh script, but what about this folder? So if I CD to this folder, okay, we have a bunch of stuff in this folder. We have the group OI. Are we in that group? Um, can I touch hack smarter? Oh, shoot. I can actually write to this directory because our user is in this O install group. Ah, I see. I think I may have just realized how to elevate our privileges. We have write permission to this directory. Oops. Could we just overwrite the root.sh file, then execute with root privs? I'd assume that would work. I don't know what you guys think, but I don't know why that wouldn't work. If we just write to that, and then we can execute it with root privileges, and then we would, I assume, be the root user. Right. 
let's just try it. I'm first. So a big, a big lesson, if you're ever doing a pen test is you generally don't want to delete files. So if you're going to modify a file, you want to make sure you make a backup of it. Don't delete the file. So I'm going to see if I can move root.sh and we'll just call it root.sh.backup. Okay. And let me make sure it actually backed it up and it did back it up. And now I'm going to make my own root.sh file and we can just make it so it, uh, I mean, there's different ways that we could elevate our privileges here. We could just do shebang bin back. Oh, wait, <laughs> I didn't even open nano. Nano is not found. Is Vim on here? Okay, that works. Guys, I don't, it's exiting V the same as Vim. We're going to be stuck in. Uh, press enter to abandon all changes. Guys, I don't even know how to use a V. How do, is it I to start typing? Okay, I'm right, it is I to start typing, okay. Bin bash, and then we could potentially do like bin bash dash I just to get a root shell is what I'm thinking. And then we'll save it, whoops, escape W, uh, how do I save, is it WQ? I did it. Cool, I learned how to use V. And I need to make that executable, of course. And now if I do sudo dash L, ideally if I run this with sudo privileges, oh, I am the root user, that easy. I said to think about that for a moment, like how would I like what, think outside the box, but we, we are officially the root user here, amazing. Let me go ahead and just document exactly what we did though. So first we renamed, well, I don't need to give you exact commands. So how did we do this? We renamed root.sh to make a backup of it, created our own root.sh with this content for a shell. And I will drop the information there. So I'm gonna grab this add it to my notes, made it executable, profit. And we'll drop that there as well. Showing the full privilege escalation here. We are the root user. So initial access is, is quite difficult, I think for this machine, but once you have access, privilege escalation was pretty easy. And then from there, we can go ahead and grab the root.txt file. And normally I don't show the flags, but there you go. I just gave, gave you the flag. Once again, we don't do silly leagues or anything like that. So if you, if you watch my stream just to steal flags, I mean, you're quite literally only cheating yourself. But let me go ahead and add that and make sure we get credit for that flag. I'll paste it in, hit submit. And can I, can I get my own certification? If I hit complete, will it give me a certification? Hey, view completion. Let's see how this new cert looks. I just designed a new cert and it's not showing in Firefox. There we go. This is a certified that I have successfully completed Challenge Lab Talisman Medium. So here's a cool thing. If you are a subscriber to the HackSmarter platform, every time you complete a lab, a hack with me, a course, you will get a really nice looking certificate of completion. It, I, I recently revamped it. The one that was there before was like the default one. I completely redesigned it and made a brand new one. They're also verifiable. You can scan the QR code to verify that you did successfully complete the lab, but this was the talisman machine over on hack smarter labs. So, Hey, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this series, but this was part four. Was it part four or part three? Either way, this is the final video of us working through the talisman machine. Hey, if you have any questions or if you did privilege escalation a different way, I would love to hear from you. Believe it or not, I do my best to read all the comments on my videos. So leave a comment of how you approach the machine or how you elevated your privileges. And I would love to learn from you as well. So thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one.